The 1970 Chevy Chevelle SS455 by AMT Ertl, coming up next on the Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage. Hello once again General Motors fans and welcome back to another amazing Monster Hobbies unboxing video as we get to look inside the AMT Ertl 1970 Chevrolet Chevelle SS 454. Now this is one of those amazing cars from the 1970s with a lot of muscle power, horsepower and everything else. And if you have actually owned one of these cars I want you to let me know in the comments down below. Pound that notification bell and like and subscribe so that every time I make a new video, you are one of the first ones to see it. So without further delay, let's go down to our GM showroom and see what's in the box. And now we head back to the Chevrolet showroom for 1970 as we check out this amazing A-bodied Chevelle SS454 by AMT Ertl. Now this of course is a skill level two kit. And as we can see, it is pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> okay, if we turn the side here, we can see, if we zoom in a little, our nice engine detail and the built model. So our interior engine and side of the car. And then there we've got our box art picture again. Just zoom back out so we can turn our box up on edge. And here, of course, we have the same pictures, but now we can see that this is a skill level three kit requires, or sorry, skill level two for ages 10 and up requires glue and paint. And again, licensed by GM, originally came out in 2004, at least this edition. So now we'll just turn our kit around here and let's take the lid off our Chevelle. And here we get confronted with our instruction sheet like so. Inside I've got the decals. Something nice for you. <laughs> I bought this kit on June. Actually it says bought as a birthday gift from Julie on my 30th birthday. Wow, so long ago. <laughs> when I was young. There's our body in plastic. Gee, I don't know if I looked at this kit or not. There's our interior and a seat and dashboard. Here we have our hood and I guess bucket seat backs. Our chrome! Yay! Yeah, I guess there was one bag and I just pulled these out of it. There's our chassis. Oh, the AMT Ertl logo inside there under the gas tank. Yep, those are the backs of the buckets. The console molded in place. Here we have our engine details. Some suspension components. Oh, it's got those pins in there. Wow, look at how big those king pins are. Wow. <laughs> okay, there's our rear axle and firewall. Wow, look at that big <laughs> engine components, intake manifold, and I wonder if that goes on there. Yep, that's like an air cleaner or something for the intake manifold. Take a look at that in our instructions. Look at how huge that air cleaner is. Holy smokes. Does the real Chevelle have a big air cleaner like that? Here is our infamous steering wheel in a bag, which seemed to be an RC2 thing to do for whatever reason. Anybody that worked back there, let me know what that was about. It was just like they decided to clip off steering wheel columns every single time. Like it should be molded on here or something, right? Like, what was with that? Anyway, there's our engine and all the rest. And our glass in a bag, which is nice. It saves it from getting scratched up. Tires and rear tail lights also in a bag, which is good. It's interesting that the tires will burn into glass, but they won't burn into the tail lights. Like, or maybe that's a theory. Okay, so that's our exposure here. So we'll clear all this away and then we'll take a look at the instructions. And here's our instructions for our 1970 Chevelle SS 454. A nice, awesome looking artwork here as we open up our instructions and begin our adventure. So we'll just zoom the camera back here. And now AMT Ertl has these full 
fold out things. As we can see, this is RC2 down here. There's all our callouts for our colors. So I'll just zoom this back up so we can read them. Now, here we have Chevrolet engine red, gloss black, flat black, semi gloss white, uh, black, pardon me, gloss white, flat white, gold, silver, steel, aluminum, amber, gloss red. Interior color is Y and exterior color is X. So we'll just go back out here again and open up our instructions. Now here in our engine we have our basic assembly and as you can see this is a two-part engine block with transmission in two halves. Our oil pan is a solid piece, our uh, cylinder heads go in together on the sides, starter motor up in here, and our front engine cover. There's our pulleys and belts with the alternator and the fan. And I've noted each of the colors, so their fan is gloss black, flat black on our pulleys and belts, or sorry, on our pulleys, the Sorry, on our belts. Wow. The pulleys are gloss black. There's a plated alternator. And then all this in here is going to be Chevy engine red. Starter motor doesn't have a color call out, but it should be black. And here we have the stock 454 cubic inch LS6 motor. The air cleaner, that big gigantic air cleaner goes on here. Ah, it's a Ram Air style with that nice seal that butts up underneath the hood. So that's why it's huge. Here, of course, is our coil going onto our intake manifold. There's the valve covers going on. They say to paint them silver, so I guess they're not painted. Flat black for the, the thing there. Flat white for our open air element. Gloss black, there's a decal goes on here for air cleaner. There's our distributor, and that's basically the LS6, the stock version. Next up, we have the custom 454 V8, and I do believe this is fuel injection. And that is our cover for our fuel injection, plus the hoses. There's our intake manifold, the big tall sky riser. And then we've got our distributor and the coil going together, and here are plated valve covers. Now the next panel shows our stock tires and stock wheels. Actually, these tires are universal. It says to trim out the plug inside the tires. And then here we have our GM stock wheel. I'm showing you to paint in here flat black. Leave the rest of it chrome. And the details, there's our wheel backs. And it will all fit together in here. These are the nice Firestone tires with the groove inside. As made by the last group from AMT. Now what I mean by the last group from AMT, of course, is before the RC2 takeover, when AMT was still its own company. Now here we have these cool custom wheels. Um, I hope they're in the kit, because sometimes they would say, hey, there's a custom wheel, and then it's not there. But these ones are kind of neat. They've got neat little holes in them. And then our wheel backs again. Now down here is the stock colors. So, for example... If your car was gold beige, then the in that's the body color. Then the interior would be either a choice of black, blue, gold, parchment, teal, or red. No, no, not red. It goes up to teal. So, oh, Gobi beige. So then they got all these different colors. So you, you pick a color you like, like autumn gold here, and then you can find out what interior colors it had back in the day. Next up, we have our interior panel. And there we have our nice dashboard with all this labeled out. Semi-gloss black inside, flat black, silver. There's our nice steering wheel. Our two bucket seats with the console and the shift lever. Bucket seat backs and the bench seat all going into this interior tub. And there is the Y for the body color. And here is the stock suspension and chassis arrangement. And here we have our differential. There is a bit of the drive shaft molded in place as well as these arms. And there's our shock absorbers. This will glue into here, which includes our mufflers and exhaust pipes. And then you glue on the little springs into the undercarriage. And here's the rest of the differential molded in place, as well as a lot of the front suspension components. And then we drop our Chevy 454 up in here 
with of course our exhaust manifolds and hook up these exhaust tips onto the rest of our exhaust pipes. Here we have the custom arrangement for undercarriage. And this time around it says to cut off the mufflers and exhaust pipes, glue in the uh, upper and lower differential which would be off of here, the shock absorbers, the springs, and then we've got our custom 454 going in here with these white headers. And the headers will just dump out the sides. Panel 7 shows the completion of our chassis. Now here you're going to put those pins through these uh, little supports here and then glue them right into the wheel. Being careful not to get glue inside here otherwise your wheels will lock up and jam in the front and won't be able to rotate. There's our rear axle going through the metal axles and of course we have our stock hubcap and wheel and tire arrangement going on. And they also say either stock or custom on the wheels here with the S and K's. And here we have panels 8 and 9. I'll show them both together because it's all part of the same. So it says to trim off the shaded areas. So right here in between the fenders and a little bit off the body between those headlights. And then there's our firewall going in here up to the front of the, the uh, interior tub. Our windshield going in with the rear view mirror. And telling you where all the silver and different paints are along here. And then in section 9, it's showing to open up some of the trim around the headlights. And then you can glue on your front clip in here. Uh, yeah, interesting. And then the headlights, of course. Just trying to see how this would go together. Oh, it. Okay, so the front chrome goes up and you link it in from behind and push it forward that way. Now sections 10 and 11 show the completion of our body. So here it'll click onto our chassis and then you put in your radiator wall here with the upper radiator hose and your battery onto the rad support. Then our rear tail lights are going into the rear bumper. There's an array here to paint flat black, put your decal on and then the exhaust tips here and here. And then number 11 shows our decals going on the hood and the trunk lids. The hood popping in place and then this item here which looks like the top of the fan shroud going in place. Interesting they show the uh, fuel injected motor sitting here. And that completes our look at the SS Chevelle 454 instruction sheets. Now let's go down and check out our plastic components. And here we have our Chevelle body looking like a true Chevelle of the era in 125th scale which of course the Ravel monogram kit coming up next week is in 124th so it would be slightly larger but here you can see the area that we need to remove there and there however they did mold it in place just so that it wouldn't sink in and get damaged in the mold process it is a bit thick in here so after you saw through you'll need to file this down a little on those edges there are some mold marks underneath which again your number 16 hobby blade should be able to remove it's kind of interesting here, there is a bit of a roof panel with some indentations for sun visors up in the roof. See if you can see that there. It's kind of unique, but I don't know if it actually gets done. And that little texture just disappears right in this section. So I'm not too sure what's going on about that. There's a little pin in the back for alignment. More mold marks. There is a big sort of like a ripple right in this inner fender. Um, I would take a half round file and file this down till it gets flush with there. All right, anyway, so on the outside we have our SS script all along the fender where it should be. There is quite a high ridge along here. The seam line should go up and then around this window frame. As you can see, there is quite a bit of flash in my example just around the window there. You see, my fingers are. Okay. And that would go in there. There's also a seam line going across here on the roof and then down. It's really sharp actually. So be careful you don't cut yourself on that. <laughs> there is mold mark, uh, some flash going up around in this wheel arch here. Let's see, I don't know. Um, I guess after a bit of sandpaper cleanup and whatnot, shouldn't be too bad. The trunk lid does feel a bit lumpy in here. 
So a bit of cross sanding with your sanding block. Make sure it's on some MFD. Uh, sand across this way, cross sand this way, and you should start to level the trunk lid out. And then go in with your finer sandpapers. Be careful of the Chevelle script back here, as well as your side marker lights. I know if you sand the trunk you're not going to hit those, but you know what I'm saying. The molding around the wheel arches, all kinds of goodness. Overall though, I mean, after you clean it up, it should look like a proper Chevelle body. Next up we have our chassis pan here. Our chassis pan! <laughs> and as you can see there are some big mold marks in there. So fill them up with some putty and sand her smooth. I don't know if you're going to really see those with the fire or the rad support in there. Um, there are some nice uh, details of wires with clips going on here. Wire harnesses, the AMT Ertl logo in the back, of course. Turning it over, we have the fuel cell and then our locations for our rear axle and springs, maybe? No. Oh, uh, exhaust pipes, pardon me. We we'll go through those big holes. There's our drive shaft right up the center. Holes again for our exhaust pipes. And those arms going off here. This is a full perimeter frame, which is very much like all the GMA bodies of the time period. Uh, there's our front um, anti sway bar. The A arms are all molded in place, so this is very basic. Almost makes me think of the 67 Pontiac GTO. So I must do some research, find out if this was an MPC kit originally. But anyway, uh, you get the one pan, and there you go. And following up for the effect of our fade-outs here, <laughs> we have our interior panel, with of course our rear bench seat and our dashboard molded in here. Now, if I bring this up to the camera, you can see there are some mold marks along here. It is very simplified inside there, and of course the problem with the pan style, or the tub style I should say, is that you don't get the nice uh, window cranks, which I can't seem to find right now, but that's okay <laughs> for comparison. There's some little teeny tiny pedals up there. I mean, it's very weak in that regard for detail. However, the dashboard here does make it up quite nicely. And the rear separately molded bench seat with the pleats in it is also quite nice. If you can see that detail there. So it is a bit of a trade-off, but still, I mean, for a general purpose SS Chevelle 454, should do the job quite nicely. There's that nice window crank again from GM. I think I show this in every GM video. <laughs> but when you have a tub that you don't get this nice detail, of course, this detail comes from separately molded side interior panels. And here's the remainder of the parts. There are quite a few small, short plastic sprues in this kit. For example, we have the one with the air intake hood and our back seats there. There's those custom headers and the upper radiator hose. Then we have the separate steering wheel that was in that little bag for reasons. <laughs> Reasons only known to RC2, because they seem to do it in every kit. Anyway, uh, there's our stock headers with the exhaust pipes molded in place, which this style is kind of nice because you can glue them on the side of the engine, drop the engine in, and then kind of move them like this way in and out on the engine block to make them line up with where they go on the chassis, or actually to the end of these exhaust uh, pipes there. So instead of having it cut off here, and then these hooking up inside the car, you know, this is a little bit easier to line up. Then here we have our front wheel backs and our rear wheel backs. These pins, of course, are going through these king pins here, which there's a lot of little flash bits on there, which we'll have to clean up. There's our firewall and our exhaust pipes with mufflers and the rear differential in two halves. The little drive shaft bit there and our radius arms. Then there's our bucket seats and the center console. This kind of reminds me of the 64 Chevy Impala. Sort of the same front type seats. There's our radiator wall support and our radiator. And the battery would go on this little bit here. Wow, those shock absorbers are really thin and tiny. 
and the rear springs are just as tiny. Here's our 454 engine block in the two halves with the pulleys and belt, front timing cover, and water pump. And then our uh, starter motor there. There's our oil pan, the right and left cylinder heads, that little guy there, <laughs> a battery, the spot where probably the steering wheel is molded in place. Anyway, uh, there's our coil, our carburetor, the big intake manifold, the fuel injection setup here. This piece, which, oh, ha, that's what it is. This is the front plenum for the um, fuel injected bit. So much like an old Corvette, right? Uh, 80s Corvette, I'll say. So there's our air cleaner for the induction molded hood scoop there. Plus the top of the air cleaner and our distributor. And here's the stock Chevy components, the regular uh, intake manifold, our five bladed fan and then our valve covers so let's just pull some of this up for the detail let's see what do we want to see well maybe not this so much maybe not this so much ah how about the seats the seats have the nice tuck and roll pattern the console looks correct and down the seam although every time i say something looks correct of course you guys are telling me in the comments down below that it was the worst model AMT ever made and it's totally out of being the proper Chevy, but I don't know. I digress. Okay, there's our steering wheel with the SS Chevelle. Kind of rally sport, I guess. And then our hood here contains the hood hinges, or not the hood hinges, the hood pins. And then the little induction bit that pops up. There's some script along the side of the hood, right in there which would be correct but it's very low you don't really see it well, if you painted it of course it would pop up and then you could get it with a silver uh, on a fine dry brush there of course are some old marks and some raised marks up here which will have to be taken down you can see them better up there seat backs so all this gets covered luckily the headers have some old marks in them, so you'll have to shape those with the number 16 hobby blade or fill them in. There's our little intake manifold for the stock version. The valve covers look about correct. These would be painted Chevy orange, possibly even aluminum. There's our big fuel injection intake. Little box on there. Neat looking stuff. Of course this will come down the sides of this quite a bit, sort of sitting down sort of there. Looks really nice and crisp, because it would help if I didn't drop it, right? And then finally we have our engine here. You can see the standard transmission molded in place, although the pedals on the floor are pointing at an automatic again. Kind of sucks when that happens. You could use some evergreen sheet just to make a pedal in there. Anyway. That's sort of what we're looking at. Mold marks along the back again on that firewall. Or pardon me, rad support. Anyway, so let's bring our parts back for their final curtain call here. And I hope I can arrange this properly, considering that I'm totally rearranging this. <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, no problems. No problems. So there's all our components to complete the gray pieces of this kit. Next up we have our chrome components. Here we've got the, our rear bumper and our front grille, as well as the four stock GM wheels. And then here we have those custom wheels. So yes, they do exist, which is nice. There's our chrome alternator, the custom valve covers, exhaust dumps, rear view mirror, and the shift knob. So not too much chrome in this. There are a lot of empty boxes in here, so at one time there must have been some nice chrome pieces that got kind of clipped out of future molding processes. Probably something up along here too, just to fill this in. So it'd be nice to see an older version of this kit. Let's see what else was on there. I bet a lot of race components. <laughs> Custom grills, George Barris stuff, I don't know. Anyway, those wheels look kind of cool though. You could paint those center circles flat black. Give them kind of honeycomb look. I don't know. 
detail is quite nice on here for the parts you do get. Chrome grill looks pretty excellent. Of course, put in some flat black in there. Same with this recessed area here on the rear bumper, just to make it look right. Anybody actually own a real Chevelle out there? Let me know in the comments below how you liked it. This, of course, you could paint all flat black in here, get rid of those mold marks with your hobby blade. Some really high ones in that rear bumper there. Paint it all black inside so you can't see it when you flip the car over, but you can still see the chrome on the outside. Overall, for what's here, it's not bad. Next up we have our clear components. And this, it looks like your typical made in the 70s style windshield going on here, windshield and rear panel. Because of course we have the connecting clear glass bridge going here. You could always saw this off there and there and carefully glue it into the windshield frames and rear window frame. Uh, just to make it look better when you turn the thing upside down that you don't see these rails going up through your ceiling <laughs> on the inside. There's our four little headlights, so be careful you don't send those flying across the room. Remember if there's a crosshatch pattern in there that it goes north and south and not at a 45 degree angle or worse off, 60 degree angle or 30 or something bizarre. So make sure they go straight up and down with the way they are. And then of course our two little red tail lights in here. And if you uh, put a piece of silver, paint them silver from the back or whatever, they will pop up much like here on this wrench. See? Instead of just kind of looking black red. Um, again, there's a lot of mold marks under here and serial numbers. So again, you know, just <laughs> what offends thee, cut it out. <laughs> anyway, but overall all nice and good and I'm glad that they put these in clear plastic. Plastic bags so it wouldn't get all scratched up or tire burned. So here we have the tires for this model kit, which are the Firestone Super Sports, which are brand new tires, which I think were introduced in 1991 on the Ford Fairlane kit that came out from AMT. These tires came prior to RC2 buying over the company. Um, now, it's kind of interesting. So I, I don't know with this Chevelle if this is a retooling from an older kit. Of course, you can see the nice tread work in here, as usual. You can read the script. There is a groove in here, so you could paint a white wall or a red line in there. But, you know, if this kit was modified from an earlier edition, I can imagine that it would have had these vintage Goodyear tires in there, which are a solid one. I've seen these in a lot of kits from MPC and that sort of thing back in the 70s. The solid rubber tire or polyvinyl or something. The other kind of tire it might have had are these other Goodyear Polyglass GTs, which we've seen in some other kits, with that kind of tread on it. I did paint a white wall on these guys, in case you were wondering. But, uh, I don't know, I just something about this kit makes me think it would have had one of these two tires originally. And then round two came up with these later. I could be mistaken if you worked on this project, because I know some of you guys that are watching these videos did work for round two and RC2 and whatnot. So if you have any idea, let us all know in the comment section down below. We'd love to hear from you. Last but not least, we have the decal sheet. And this can be just as fun as the chrome, by the way, because I like all the artwork and how everything is done. Although this decal sheet is basically box stock. So you got your choice of black stripes or white stripes. And then there's our air cleaner decal, which we saw, of course, in the instruction sheet. And then we have California muscle car as license plates. These ones are kind of universal to any uh, 60s era, 70s era muscle car. You could pop them on anything. I am curious why California seems to be one of the more popular license plate choices of all these model kits. I wonder if there's any states that are actually like forgotten about on these <laughs> instructions or like has a 1% chance or something, you know, like Alaska or I don't know, Minneapolis or something, Min Minneapolis, Minnesota. I don't know. Anyway, it is a pretty nice decal sheet. And that completes our look at the AMT Ertl 1970 Chevelle SS 454. Now, if you've built this model kit, let us know in the comments down below how you enjoyed it. Did it go together well? Did you have any major problems with it or not? And next week, we're going to be taking a look at the Ravel Monogram 1970 Chevelle. And I want 
if you have built both of these cars, I want you to let me know how they compared. Which one did you like better out of the two? Which one looks better on your shelf? And all sorts of other things. So let me know that in the comment section down below. And now we'll wrap up our video. Well, I hope you enjoyed that amazing model car review. And you know what? There are a lot of Chevelles sitting out there in model kit land. So next week, you won't want to miss our great video because we're going to actually take a look at the Revell Chevrolet Chevelle and see what's different about that from the AMT kit. So you don't want to miss that. And in order to not miss that, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell because when this video comes out, it'll automatically tell you in your YouTube notifications and then you can check it out and see just how different this model kit is from next week's. So model car builders, without further ado, I'm going to drive on out of here. So until next time, happy model building.